Shadow Cat, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Don't you like the fireplace? I thought we had a kind of a cute, cozy vibe going on, but now that I started filming, I'm like, is that a little intense? But we're gonna keep it for now. Today we're gonna talk about my July TBR, and it's gonna be a little different from my usual TBRs because we're not doing the wheel. I know, sacrilegious, but I'm co-hosting and participating in two different readathons in July, and one of them is similar to the wheel in which you kind of pick your TBR randomly based on random prompts you get, and I didn't know how to do the wheel and then do that throughout the month. It's still gonna be fun though, and we're still gonna pick some of my TBRs semi-randomly together today. So first we're gonna talk about the tarot readathon, and I will have some tarot cards pick my TBR for the month. Then we're gonna talk about Summerween, and then we're gonna finish off talking about some books that I don't know exactly when I wanna read them, what readathon I wanna read them for, but they're just kind of like on my radar and some things I wanna to get to this month. So when I can squeeze them in, I'm going to do so. So first the Tarot Readathon. This is a month long team-based readathon that was created by Deja from Deja's Book World and Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages. I will have both of their channels linked down below. There are four teams. I'm going to be co-hosting Team Swords with Lexi from Books with Lexi, which I am so excited about. I will have Noelle and Deja's announcement videos linked down below so you can get all of the information on it if you would like to. It is a team-based competitive readathon, so there will be a winner, but it's really fun focus on just like having a good time, self-care, reading books you enjoy, and there are a ton of different prompts that you can get and all of the prompts are really fun and different and unique which I'm really excited about. Each of the teams have different bonuses that will help them throughout the month so you can choose your team based on that, you can choose your team based on the host, you can choose your team based on your astrology sign, whatever you want to do. And you don't have to be into tarot cards or astrology or anything to join this to be honest. I don't know anything about those things that I'm co-hosting. I'm just here for a fun, chill time and like reading as a group. I've participated in two team-based readathons over the past two months and it's just been really, really fun. And you don't have to buy a tarot card deck either. There are a ton of online generators that you can use. I will link the one that I'm gonna use today down below or you can even just use like a normal deck of playing cards. So right now we're gonna go ahead and virtually draw five tarot cards and that will kind of get my month started and then I'll pull the rest throughout the month because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a vlog at some point for this throughout the month so I want to have something to pull during that. So I'm going to draw a card Knight of Pentacles. So the prompt for this card is to read your most anticipated book on your TBR. Hmm what is this? Okay I'm gonna go with a book that I was actually going to talk about later one of those ones that was just kind of on my radar for the month that I wanted to try and get to. It reminds me of another book that I read and loved so I feel like I have a good chance of enjoying it and I am really looking forward to it. The Night Guest and I'm not even trying to attempt the last name. I'm so sorry I tried to find a video of the author pronouncing it but I couldn't and I just know I will butcher it and it will be offensive. <laughs> this gives me vibes of Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder and it's interesting that they have both similar titles and kind of similar premises and I loved that book so I'm really excited for this one. This is a horror, it's coming out on September 3rd but I do have an arc of it that I want to get to. We're following a woman who keeps going to the doctor, she's experiencing a lot of fatigue and every doctor she sees just kind of like writes her off. She keeps getting the same advice, have you tried eating better, exercising more, establishing a nighttime routine. She tries to follow their advice buying everything from vitamins to sleeping pills to a step counting watch nothing helps and then one night she falls asleep with the watch on and wakes up to find that she's walked over 40,000 steps throughout the night. What is happening when she's asleep? Why is she waking up with increasingly disturbing injuries and why won't anyone believe her? It seems eerie and spooky and creepy and it seems like it's gonna have some commentary on how women are treated in the medical space and it's short which I always like in a horror. Okay draw another card. The star. Read a graphic novel or manga. This is actually one prompt I didn't really want to get. I used to really enjoy graphic novels, but I just have not been into them recently. I don't even know if I have any on my TBR right now. You know what I might try? And this might be good for Summerween as well, so I can like double up on my readathon requirements, is something from Junji Ito. I've always been interested in reading something from him. I don't know why I haven't yet, but I would still want to. But where do I start? His most popular is Uzumaki and a lot of my friends on Goodreads have read this and given it like four and five stars. So I think I might try this one. It sounds very weird and I don't really know what to expect from it. A small town on the coast of Japan is cursed. Their town is haunted not by a person or being, by, but by a pattern, Uzumaki, the spiral, the hypnotic secret shape of the world. And Sav from Riveting Reads, like in her review said, now I'm scared of spirals. And like, what does that even mean? How can you be scared? of spirals. So I'm kind of intrigued. Okay, let's draw another card. Three of Cups. So the prompt for this card is to read a book featuring friendship. Would we accept a friends to lovers 
romance. I mean, I would. I wouldn't be mad if someone else counted that for this prompt. So I think I'm gonna do it. Because this is another book that's on my radar for a month. I've had this on my TBR for a little while and recently I've just been in the mood for like a really long slow burn romance like Mariana Zapata style. I don't know why but like I just want to wait 400 pages for the main characters to look at each other. I don't know. And it's a queer slow burn romance and it has such a high average rating on Goodreads. It has a 4.45 which is kind of wild. Did I even say the name of this? Those Who Wait by Haley Cass. So we're reading from Sutton and Charlotte. Charlotte. Sutton's ideas for her life were fairly simple. Finish grad school and fall in love. It would be a lot simpler if she could pinpoint exactly what she should do when she grads graduates in less than a year. Charlotte is very much the opposite. She's always had clear steps outlining her path to success with no time or inclination for romance. When they meet through a dating app, it's immediately clear that they aren't suited for anything more than friendship. Featuring friendship, right? I'm going with it. All right, another card. King of Pentacles. Read a book with an unreliable narrator or a villain's POV. Ooh. I like this one. And I think another one that I had on my radar would work for this, which I'm so excited about because I really wanted to fit these books in somewhere. So Love Letters to a Serial Killer by Tasha Coriel. From my assumption, I feel like this is going to be reading from an unreliable narrator or kind of a villainous POV, morally gray character. Maybe if I start it and it doesn't turn out to be that, we'll pick another book for this prompt. This is a mystery thriller with a romance subplot, I believe, though I don't know how like strong that's going to be. We're reading from Hannah who starts writing to William who was recently arrested for the murder of four women. While he is in custody a fifth woman is murdered so he's released and he immediately moves in with Hannah but I think she's still somewhat suspicious of him so while they're living together and it says um falling into a routine of domestic bliss she's also investigating him for serial murder. I'm assuming Hannah's gonna have a little bit of a morally gray vibe because why are you running to a man who's being investigated for murdering four women? But I think this sounds really good. I love the cover of it. Okay so this is gonna be the last card we draw for now and the rest we will draw throughout the month. Ten of Wands. So the prompt for this card is to read a book about a character who's carrying a heavy burden or going through a lot. Hmm. I think another book on my radar could work for this one as well. I feel like if you can make an argument for it to work, it works. That's that's my mentality at least. Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. This is one of those books that I had like never heard of until like up to two weeks ago and now since then I've seen it everywhere and I've seen people giving it really high ratings and saying it's really disturbing which always gets me. Reclusive Sally Diamond causes outrage by trying to incinerate her dead father. Now she's the center of attention, not only from the hungry media and police detectives, but also a sinister voice from a past she does not remember. I feel like, I feel like she's going through a lot. As she begins to discover the horrors of her early childhood, Sally steps into the world for the first time, making new friends, big decisions, and learning that people don't always mean what they say. She's going through a lot. But who is the man observing Sally from the other side of the world and why does he call her Mary? And why does her new neighbor seem to be so obsessed with her? Sally's trust issues are about to be severely challenged. She's going through a lot. I'm very intrigued by this one. I'm excited to get to it. So that is it for the tarot readathon for right now. The other readathon that I'm going to be participating in is Summerween, which is happening from July 5th to July 11th. This is being hosted by Gabby Reads. I will have her channel linked down below and her announcement video and everything. I'm pretty sure I've participated in Summerween every year since it started. So it just feels like a little nice summer tradition for myself. And I always have a ton of fun doing it. There are five prompts. I just have three books planned for right now. I think I just want to kind of mood read throughout the week for the rest of them. The first prompt is to read a book in the dark or at night. This is one I'm just gonna like fill in for whatever, whatever I have an ebook of, you know? The second prompt is to read a thriller or a horror book. For this, I'm gonna read Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, which I'm very excited for. I've read every Riley Sager book and this is his first book where the main character is a man. I know a lot of people complain when he writes women and like don't like the way he writes his female characters. I've never really had an issue, but I am excited to see him do something different. We're reading from a guy named Ethan and when he's 10 years old, he's camping in a tent in the backyard with one of his friends. And this takes place in New Jersey, also my home state. And his friend goes missing and is never seen again. 30 years later Ethan has just returned to his childhood home and weird things are happening. He's suffering from bad dreams and insomnia, someone seems to be roaming the cul-de-sac at odd hours, and signs of his friend's presence keep appearing in Ethan's backyard. I'm really really hoping this has sort of a supernatural paranormal vibe to it, kind of like Home Before Dark did. That's one of my favorites of his and I'm really hoping he does it again. I have not seen any reviews of this so far. I think it came out like last week, two weeks ago. I don't know. I don't know what anyone thinks of it, 
and I kind of don't want to until I read it. The next prompt is to read a book with a sky on the cover. For this I'm going to be reading Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle and this will also fulfill another prompt which is to read a book that takes place in the summer or has a cover with summer vibes. I don't know if this takes place in the summer but it definitely has summer vibes on the cover. I've read a horror book from Chuck Tingle before and I really enjoyed it though it was YA so I'm excited to read something adult from him. This has a really short synopsis so I don't really know what to expect from it. Misha is a jaded scriptwriter who has been working in Hollywood for years and has just been nominated for his first Oscar. But when he's pressured by his producers to kill off a gay character in the upcoming season finale, Misha discovers that it's not that simple. As he is haunted by his past and past mistakes, Misha must risk everything to find a way to do what's right before it's too late. Like what's gonna happen? I have no idea, but I'm excited for it. The fourth prompt is to read a book that has five or more words in the title. So for this, I'm gonna go with The Best Way to Bury Your Husband by Alexia Casal. And this I think would also work for a book that has like a strong friendship vibe to it. If you think the other book I picked doesn't work. This is a mystery maybe thriller but I think it's gonna be very like Finley Donovan. They describe it as a dark comedy. When Sally kills her husband with a cast iron skillet she's more fearful of losing her kids than of disposing of a fresh corpse. But Sally isn't the only woman in town reaching the brink. Soon Sally finds herself leading an extremely unusual self-help group and among them are four bodies to hide. Can they all figure out the perfect way to bury their husbands and get away with it? Together fueled by righteous anger but tempered by a moral core the four women must help each other work out a plan to get rid of their husbands for good. Along the way Sally, Ruth, Samira, and Janie read discover old joys and, and embark on new passions in work, education, and life. Friendship and laughter really are the best medicine and so is getting away with murder. I think this one could be very fun. So that is it for Summer Wee. On to the books that are just on my radar for the month. We actually hate most of them so we just have one more to talk about. Just Some Stupid Love Story by Caitlin Doyle. I want to try and find a way to slip this in somewhere throughout my reading for the month. This is a romance we're reading from Molly who writes Hollywood rom-coms for a living but doesn't really like believe in love and romance. And then Seth who is a divorced attorney but is like a true romantic and they are actually exes. They dated in high school and at their 15th high school reunion Molly is forced to sit with Seth. Too many martinis and a drunken hookup later they decide to make a bet. Whoever can predict the fate of five couples before the next reunion must declare that the other is right about true love. The catch? The fifth couple is the two of them. Molly assures Seth they are a tale of timeless heartbreak. Seth promises she'll end up hopelessly in love with him. She thinks he's delusional. He has five years to prove her wrong. I just talked about recently how second chance romances can be hit or miss for me but this sounds fun. I think it has a lot of like fun dynamics to it. I always love a romance that has a little bit of a gimmick and this is from a debut author. So there we have it. That is my TBR for the month. It's been so long since I haven't done a wheel and I've done like more of a sit down just talk to you straight tbr i would love to hear if you're participating in a tarot readathon what team you're on if you're participating in summerween what other readathons you're doing this month or just what's on your tbr in general thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye <laughs>